What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and a stimulus check update. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. I will keep you up to date here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, thanks for hitting the like button for us down below. Voters say they are okay with changes to fix Social Security, including one of the major changes that would raise Social Security benefits up to $2,400 more per year an additional $2,400 per year for Social Security benefits proposed by Senator Bernie Sanders and Senator Elizabeth Warren by raising taxes on the richest Americans. Now, there is a slight difference on how, well, Democrats and Republicans want to do this. Democrats want to take in this extra revenue from high income earners, aka rich people, and then raise benefits for everybody, the, well, <laughs> non-high income earners. Uh, Republicans, per se, want to um, really just take in this extra revenue and um, just kind of, well, not really raise benefits, just keep Social Security solvent. Um, but there could be, who knows what, what we will see happen here, uh, what we will end up getting passed. But uh, here's some, some details based on this new polling. Several proposed changes to the Social Security program have, quote, overwhelming bipartisan support that could reduce a shortfall in the coming years, according to a new survey. Increasing the level at which Social Security payroll taxes are applied from the cap of $147,000 in income to people with wages over $400,000 received an average of 81% of support between Republicans and Democrats, according to a new survey from the University of Maryland's Program for Public Consultation published Wednesday. 81% is extremely high from a survey. Remember that basically anything over two-thirds, 67%, is considered a super majority. That's enough to uh, impeach a president or overturn a presidential veto. That's how high. 81% is extremely high. Okay, And a lot of this is because, well... The majority of Americans don't make over $400,000, so they're basically saying, well, I'm not going to pay these additional taxes, so, <laughs> well, you know how it is, right? If it's not me paying the taxes, uh, yeah, let them pay the taxes, right? Yeah, you know how it is. Of course, I would be remiss to not show, you know, not mention this massive headline here. <laughs> Uh, governor calls on Pennsylvania lawmakers to pass $2,000 stimulus checks. Uh, I'll cover that here in a moment because I know uh, everybody from Pennsylvania will be like, why did you cover that? Uh, yeah. Many politicians think that addressing the problems of Social Security is a third rail so that they have persistently avoided taking action. The problem is, is getting Republicans and Democrats to agree on anything regarding Social Security has been a major boon. Uh, but large bipartisan majorities say they are ready to take tough steps to, sec to secure the Social Security program for future generations. We'll see. Expanding the wages that are subject to payroll taxes would eliminate 61% of the shortfall which is projected to reduce 20% of monthly benefits by 2035 without any changes to the program. Uh, contrary to popular belief, the program is not going to run insolvent by 2035 or not going to run uh, out of money by 2035. It's just going to be able to um, only be able to pay out 80% of benefits by 2035 
And really, with the new amount of money the government is starting to take in now, if you've been watching my show here, uh, you know that the government, the federal government and all states are taking in way more money than normal right now because unemployment has gone way down because of the recessionary curve. OK, remember, uh, this is kind of just kind of part of the normal recessionary curve, you know, non-Republican, non-Democrat. The re recessions really don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Um, but when everybody starts to go back to work, uh, revenues go up. OK, so uh, unemployment's around a 50 year low. It's at three point six percent. The 50 year low was three point five percent. We were just kind of there like a month or so ago. And um, so uh, the, the federal government says that they're actually going to be able to pay down the federal deficit by about one point seven trillion dollars. This will be the first time ever that they'll be able to do that. That's how much money the federal government is taking in in tax dollars, okay? Because they're, they're just taking in a lot of tax dollars right now because uh, a lot of people have gone back to work, okay? Unemployment's really, really low. And the same thing with states. Every single state right now, as far as I know, um, is taking in surplus money. They're taking in way more money than they spend almost every single month. And I can't really, I, I can't say every state every month because, you know, Good luck looking up that data, right? Um, but if, if you've been watching my channel, all these states are taking in a lot of money, more money than normal, and it's leading to billions and billions of dollars of surplus for almost every single state. And this is one of the main reasons, along with the last stimulus package, which gave billions of dollars also to each state. So that's part of the reason. Those two are the two main reasons why we're seeing these state stimulus checks, state tax rebate checks, state property checks, state gas tax pausing, state grocery tax pausing, state reducing tax rates. All those things is the those are the two main reasons. And then maybe maybe you could throw in a little bit of a there's an election coming. But honestly, there's an election uh, every two years. So, you know, I don't know if this two years is a special year, but, you know, you kind of get where I'm going here, right? Um, yeah, you know, but really it's just kind of the money's there. The money's there right now. You know, there's just money. It's just kind of, there's just billions of dollars of excess money, surplus money, flush with cash is is the words that all these states are using and the federal government. So they're flush with cash. And uh, the, the, the other main thing is being able to pass things. Okay. So uh, yeah. Uh, and so on the federal level as well, there's going to be a couple other big things here. I'll go back to, to that here in a second. Um, but like we talk about other things like um, child tax credits could be passed here this year. There's Republicans that want to pass it too, but uh, Mitt Romney has a bill for that as well. Republican senators um, may, might be in the Build Back Better bill that they're going to try to pass here. Joe Manchin's working on it. Could pass before election time. Monthly checks for children, 60, mil, 60 million children, families, you know. Um, remember, that's kind of stopped this whole year. We also think about... Student loan forgiveness, potential $10,000 per person. Uh, a lot of insiders from the White House say it's going to happen. Whether or not it happens, but they're saying it's going to happen. Uh, that's 40 million people as well. Uh, that they can do without Congress. That can just, a flick of the pen from the president, executive order, done. So that can happen. Uh, also, food assistance, SNAP benefits, food stamp, uh, that can actually be done as well just basically by the president. It's it's actually kind of not really an executive order. It kind of is. It kind of isn't. Um, they, they can actually just do that through the uh, USDA food assistance program-ish They're going to do – they're going to have a food conference uh, coming up here in a couple months coincidentally before the election uh i think i think there's going to be a, a a big raise maybe they're going to lower the eligibility as well for food assistance who knows 
on that one. But there's over 40 million people as well that get food assistance, food stamps, SNAP, um, all those good things. Maybe even WIC as well we might see. Uh, all those benefits as well. And we might see, I I'm hoping that they lower the eligibility, make more people eligible for it. And a lot of the people that do get SNAP but only get a, a small amount, there's, still, there's a lot of people that only get like 20 bucks a month, 30, 40 bucks a month that, that they don't get a lot. They, they're eligible, but they don't get that much. We could see that get changed as well. The White House has said that uh, SNAP is not enough was their words. So, um, and with a lot of the states, you know, with the pandemic bonuses kind of still going on only for about half the states, it'll be nice to see an across the board, um, raise for food assistance benefits. We're also going to be seeing almost surely a massive raise for social security cost of living adjustment, COLA raise probably one of the largest ever we're looking at uh even social security says uh social security administration official says eight percent plus is what they're expecting we don't know the exact number quite yet uh but that's what they're expecting eight percent plus so when you kind of look at all these different kind of groups of people we haven't even talked about everything but just really you just kind of look right there um, there is a lot of things on the horizon. There is a lot of things on the horizon. Um, SNAP benefits, student loan forgiveness, child tax credits. Um, and, and there's money for, and again, I didn't even kind of recover it all, but, uh, and there is money for all this stuff right now. The federal government's paying down the national deficit here, 1.5 to 1.7 trillion. States are flush with cash and they're all net positive now, bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars more per month, more per month. Um, we have, it's hard to even keep track, but well over a dozen states now that have issued uh, state stimulus checks or tax rebate checks or uh, whatever you want to call them, checks. Um, or, and then really, a, if you add, if you add in the other states that have just uh, decided to reduce taxes as well, we have a lot, and, and really, I think by the end of the year, we're going to see almost all of them, almost all of them, and we have a lot, some states now going back for a second round here as well, second round, because some states are issuing a check, and then they're like, well, we're still bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars extra per month. We could send out a little bit more, could send out a little bit more. I'll go back here to this. Yeah, the uh, Pennsylvania governor is really pushing hard for these $2,000 stimulus checks for his state. Um, he's a Democrat, and the Pennsylvania legislature is Republicans. So, the, <laughs> yeah, he's got, a, he's got a little bit of a battle on his hands. A little bit, a little bit of a battle on his hands. Um, and the thing is, is that they have the money. They have the money. Um, in fact, not only do they have the money, and if you've watched my channel, you, you've you seen, in fact, I have a video um, with, with an interview here. I'll link you to here. Um, and a lot of, this is where a lot of these states, they don't even have to dip into their state money. They don't even have to dip into their state money. They are, the governor says he can, they can use just a portion of, of their stimulus money that they got from the last stimulus package that went to their state. And they can use, it's like less than half of that for the $2,000 stimulus checks for Pennsylvanians that make under, it's 75 or 80,000. Um, and they won't even use all of the money for that. And they're not even going to use any of their own state money. And if they don't use it all by, it's like 2024, they have to give it back to the federal government. So honestly, like, so think of me as your governor. Why would you not do something like this? Now, I do get the, a lot of the Republicans are uh, from different states are saying, well, we prefer to do tax cuts. The only issue with tax cuts is that they're 
permanent things. So the problem with a permanent tax cut is that you can't really budget with that with a set amount of money. So let's just say the federal government gave you, well, we'll just you know say $2, $2 billion here. You could send out $2 billion and you know the exact amount it's going to cost you. Right. I mean, you got to remember, two billion is a lot. But when you start sending it out to, you know, millions of people, <laughs> it's uh, it goes quickly. Right. It goes quickly. Remember that the uh, fourth or I'm sorry, the third stimulus check costs four hundred billion, four hundred billion, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Four hundred billion. So and remember, they're going to pay down the the deficit now by 1.5 to 1.7 trillion. That's enough for four stimulus checks for everybody. That's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. And remember that you know they're they're not going to take every dollar that they have to pay down the national deficit. You know that it's just like a business, like. You think about a business, you don't take every dollar you have in your bank account and pay down your debt. You, you keep money for to run the business for cash flow and stuff too. So, I mean, maybe at, at best you take half your money in, in, in your bank account and pay down debt, right? I mean, it's just kind of like business 101. Now, the federal government's a little bit different because they get to kind of print money. You, you know, they kind of... They, they run on a different set, set of rules. But generally, you don't take every dollar in your bank account and pay down debt with it. I mean, you need money to, to run your business. To, <laughs> the government's a big business. You need, I mean, just like any person, like any person, if you had $1,000 in your checking account, you wouldn't go take your full 1000 and pay off your credit card bill because you need money for food. You need money for gas. You need money for your rent. You need, you need you, you get the idea here, right? So um, you got to kind of also realize that's not all the money the federal government's working with on surplus money. Yeah, so the governments and the state governments, federal government, they're taking in a lot of money right now. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I get it. I get it. The question is, what are they going to use that money on? And this is a good thing. This is a good thing here because it's it's really kind of new. We've really only even heard about this here in the last few weeks. I mean, because I remember, I remember the first time I read it to you guys on camera. Um, you know, my wife brings up these articles with with uh, for me. You know, and sometimes uh, you know, I'm literally going through it with you guys on camera, and I was like. Ooh, wow like I almost was like what and uh yeah it was like it was pretty shocking and then we started hearing more and more and more about it and uh and then we started to hear the states saying the same thing and now every state is saying hey we're shocked too we're bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars extra per month and all these states now have billions of dollars surplus for the most part. I mean, some of the smaller states maybe have like a billion dollars in surplus. But um, yeah, so this is why these states can afford to send out extra checks. This is why in the past, you know, you didn't really hear about state stimulus checks, state tax rebates. I mean, rarely, maybe once in a blue moon, right? I mean, California did it last year, and that's because they had a state surplus. But remember, not too long ago, if you're from California, you know this, California was in the hole. They had a massive deficit. That was not that many years ago. I don't know how many years ago, but not that many years ago. Now they have a massive surplus. It's like $100 billion now. So what a, what a turnaround here. And there's been a lot of other states that have had a massive turnaround as well. But on the other hand, these states got to be very careful because if they turned around that quickly, they also could go the other way just as quickly if they're not being run correctly. And you never know with uh, and I, 
governors change like that. Sometimes, you know, a governor gets voted out and then there's a new governor in there. And I mean, really being a governor is sometimes you, you get a governor in there and they've never been a governor before. So they don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. So it's not probably not easy to be a governor around a whole state. Yeah, especially if you're a first time. So let me know your thoughts here. I'll keep you up to date here. Um, I'll link you to two really good videos I just did next. You need to watch them if you haven't yet. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's completely free to do so. Uh, after you click the subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notifications as soon as we go live with new videos so you don't miss out. Click here to watch my new video about $2,400 social security raises. And click here to see my newest video on stimulus checks uh, that just came out. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.